I'm making jokes, so don't panic. Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Don't miss out on our comic book creator interviews, including our monthly Chichester chats with comic book legend D.G. Chichester, superhero movie brackets, and our search for the worst comic book movie of all time, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. This is Luca Perch, host of a Totally Turtle sports and gaming YouTube channel, and you're listening to the Occasion Lunatics Podcast Network. All right, you sent it back two times already, kids. Who's ready for some weird and wacky ayahuasca justice? Oh, me, me, I am. <laughs> ah, that's right, kids. Welcome back to another episode of Unlimited Justice, your JLA, your JSA podcast. I am Phil. Joining me, as always, the queen be yourself. It is Buzz Buzz, Lil Hellfire. I don't know about running the hive, but she sure gets those uh, worker bees that Stingers. give her the honey. Hey, <laughs> That's right, kids. We're talking World War Three. Grant Morrison's you know, last the four, arc. On the day. four episode, the four issue miniseries from two thousand seven. What? The four issue miniseries from 2007 featuring Black Adam. World Wait, War what? Six? No. no. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> That's the joke. Oh, jocularity, humor. I see. <laughs> oh, was there a World War Three from Black? I'm sure that World War Three has popped up all. Yeah, over it's from place, 2007. But... Oh, really? Yeah. Um, it's uh Keith Champagne and John Ostrander. Hmm. And it's about Black Adam. It's kind of loosely based on what the movie was. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Now I'm now I'm remembering. Okay, just on a much smaller scale. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> much smaller scale. Yeah, wasn't that like uh, like part of like that fifty two series or whatever? It was. I'm remembering. See, and that's <laughs> the one that that's you know yeah. <laughs> that kicked me in the head a few times. Ah, uh, joke, jocularity. Yeah, no, kids. Uh, the World War Three we're talking about is Grant Morrison's final arc on JLA from JLA thirty six through was it forty one? Forty one. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, it's titled World War Three. So, shall we jump in, Lil Hellfire? <laughs> Let's dive right in. There's a lot of uh, things to to get through. Yes, because if, and as uh, always, we're gonna start off in Bell Reeve. Yes. So JLA thirty six from December nineteen ninety nine, World War Three Part One. Writer Grant Morrison, penciler Howard Porter, inker John Dell, colors Pat Gary, letter Ken Lopez, and editors Dan Rasper and Tony Bedard. Uh, in a oh no no no, this one starts in a cosmic graveyard in the space around a planet. Metron is leading Big Barda and Wonder Woman to see the effects of Mageddon. This is Wonder World. Remember that from Rock of Ages? A planet similar to the fourth world, where the greatest champions of the universe gathered to hold back any threat from the technology of the old gods. They believe themselves equal to the task, but the power of the Mageddon warhead was too much, and they tore their world apart in war. With Wonder World fallen, Metron believes that nothing can stand against Mageddon. But Wonder Woman is sure that JLA will try. See, remember when Wonder Woman was a symbol of hope? <sighs> At the Watchtower, Mr. So Miracle... A symbol for something. Whoa! Uh, At the Watchtower, Mr. Miracle is explaining the history of Mageddon to the League. The old gods of the Third World made a war that tore the previous universe apart paving the way for the new gods of the fourth world. Mageddon is one of these weapons, capable of destroying stars and using remote units like the one they found in Bel Reeve to drive sentient races to madness and war. Orion believes that all hope is lost, but I'm Superman... I'm just going to is... say it. It's just Greek mythology. It's oh, just yeah. Greek mythology. He's dressed up all fancy. Like, he didn't even cover it up. <laughs> 
<laughs> ah, he's out the door in two seconds, though. He's like, yeah. But Superman is firm. The JLA will stand against the threat, however large, with every member, past and present. Sturmer, Orion's hound, begins to howl portentously. In... <laughs> In Vanity, Oregon, the hero known as Aztec, he's back, is dreaming of the end of the world. Apocalyptic imagery such as Fenris and the Seven Seals of Revelations play out while the sky is filled with a skull-like visage. He wakes in a sweat with the news of the JLA alert just reaching him. Uh. All right, kids, if this isn't uh, crazy enough, in the ghost zone, Lex Luthor and Prometheus. <laughs> are waiting for their allies. And those aren't even the two craziest. And those aren't even the two craziest kids. After trying to impress each other with their intelligence, they so that's admit just that. a big dick measuring contest. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. While they admit that, while they may end up killing each other, they at least share a desire to see the JLA destroyed. Their two allies arrive. Queen B and the general. Uh, um, at, who calls him the general? Honestly, well, it's, it's basically healing. like you don't need to put respect on that man's name. Be yes, for real. The the former general now in the body of the shaved shaggy man. I said it. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> uh. Their plan will depend on the spaceship the White Martians left behind in the Ghost Zone, which was a Anywho. which has a <laughs> which has a portal back in the real space. With the ship, the Queen Bee's alien troopers, uh, the supervillains of Earth, and the intelligence of four villains, they are confident of their success. After all, they are operating undetected in the bowels of the Watchtower itself. In the Watchtower, there is dire news. The helmet Prometheus used last time. I thought you were going to say diarrhea. Ah, uh, no, we're not there. Get it. At least it wasn't a dick joke, kids. <laughs> uh, the helmet from potty humor. Yes, yes, literally. <laughs> helmet Prometheus used last time he fought the JLA has been stolen. As Superman notes that, ever since the Reform League, they have had no man's prophecy of a war bringer hanging over them. Uh, which, yes, we covered that story on Sector 2814, the Green Lantern podcast. Scroll down. And uh, also look for the link in your show notes. That's right. Uh, Batman believes they should concentrate on the threat of Prometheus, saying Doomsday Machines are more your forte, Superman. Burn! <laughs> I'm too busy. Burn! <laughs> wow. Meanwhile, Oracle and Meanwhile, Oracle and Steel are working on the Watchtower circuitry. A Talk series about of all hands on deck. Hey, oh, oh, deck, I said okay. deck. Uh, a series of weird power fluctuations and computer glitches have given Oracle suspicions. Steel looks over the system and finds a mysterious drain in the dining room. Hail. Just as every view on every monitor in Oracle's array is replaced with a drawing of the word boo, Prometheus steps up behind her. As Steel raises the uh, alarm... Prometheus. <laughs> I have a CD player attached to my head. <laughs> a CD-ROM <laughs> attached to my head. It's interactive too. <laughs> it's interactive as 1999 could give us kids. As Steel raises the alarm, systems and alarms shut down all over the watchtower. Queen Bee and the General walk through the White Martian portal into the dining room, shooting Green Arrow with a or Green Lantern with a dark gun on the way through. While they no, do, no Green Lantern. Hey now. Yes, I know. I of course love Cal Rainer. While they do, Lex Luthor sets off a number of bombs. On the JLA radio, he talks to Superman. Before Superman can tell him about Mageddon, however, the second set of bombs go off, gutting the watchtower. Mm. And of course, oh, that's yeah. what we could have named this podcast. JLA what? radio. Why didn't we think of that? 
Yeah, yeah, maybe. I could, I mean, I could. <laughs> I'm pretty Tele sure that was already taken, though. <laughs> yes, telepathic uplink or something. <laughs> I thought you were gonna Only say gutted mother watch boxes. We were so close. I thought you, I thought you were gonna say gutted watchtower. <laughs> Uh, on the gutted watchtower, the current state of DC Comics. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, all right, yeah, all right. So, thoughts on this, or shall we move to the next one? Let's just keep going because it gets hey. better, actually, if you can believe it. A general in the in the uh, in the indestructible body of something that looked like Sasquatch until he shaved it. Oh, all right. All right. JLA 37 from January 2000. World War Three Part 2. Same team. You know, the one where they're attacked by killer bees from space. Yes. At the explosive decompression of the watchtower is counteracted by automatic systems. Huntress's life is flashing before her eyes. She is close to death when she is rescued by Superman, who shares breath with her. She takes her as he takes her back inside. Got the kiss of life from Superman. Unlike the men Nobody of Florida. Nobody tell Lois. I know. <laughs> Unlike the, uh, the men of Florida get the kiss of death from Lil. Maybe not the kiss of death. Maybe just a quick, swift kick in the ass. I don't know. Depends on my mood. As the villain's plan unfolds, Batman realizes something is wrong when Oracle goes offline. At her clock tower HQ, she's being taunted by Prometheus. Their conversation continues until he offers her a choice. Shut down her equipment and join him, and he can make her walk again. However, she refuses the offer. Hey, oh. <laughs> Although, it didn't sound like he was going to give her the whole Felicity treatment. Oh, yeah, I could put a chip in there. A chip. <laughs> I don't know if he said shit, but it's 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 it sounded pretty close. The Felicity deal. However, she refuses the offer, causing him. To she throw wanted her... to be Oracle so bad. <laughs> exactly. But the name was taken. I shall be known as bitch with Wi-Fi. Uh, however, she refuses the offer, causing him to throw her through the clock face, lamenting that all his dates end this way. Lilith. <laughs> Relatable. <laughs> She damages his helmet in the exchange. Hey, oh, and he wrecks her computer. Yikes! <laughs> well, that escalated quickly. <laughs> <laughs> no relatable. Uh, well, that escalated quickly. Cock a doodle doo. <laughs> Gets her every time. I uh, hate us. Why are we like this? My favorite biscuit. However, rather than falling to her death, Oracle survives by clinging on to one of the hands of the clock. Luther is glo is gloating. The watchtower is gutted. They control power and all teleport links in and out. The league is scattered, and the Injustice Gang is ready to mop up. Prometheus oh, worries. God, the Injustice Gang again. Mm -hmm. Prometheus worries that they might be enjoying themselves more than they should for some reason, but gets no response from his teammates. Since his new helmet is wrecked, he will use the old one. <laughs> I bet. That's right, kids. Go buy yourself a, that uh, Prometheus action figure. You with, better uh... check yourself before you riggedy riggedy wreck yourself. <laughs> Prometheus action figure now with uh, customizable helmets. By McFarland Toys. Ding. Oh, yep. <laughs> For quality. Nah, I wouldn't say all that. Hey, oh. We would love to get it's free like, samples. Hey, from... Didn't you buy me a McFarland set? <laughs> Just got it on sale. No, we no, we would love them. On sale. We would love the free samples to review. <laughs> Superman and Steel. No, they're, they're good. I I tease. I know. I know. I would love to talk to Todd McFarland. Yeah, get in line. <laughs> no, I know. I know. Superman and Steel are fighting the general who has hell of a uh, I hear he has hell of a uh, insurance rates. 
It's funny because Steel is in this one and Shaq plays Steel. Uh huh. This is only what two years after that. Save music. some money. Go online. <laughs> You're the general. Save some time. No, no, no. no. <laughs> However, he defeats them and bites off Steel's hand. While Steel was incapacitated from the pain, Queen Bee douses him with her psycho pollen hail, turning him Relatable. into one of her dress. <laughs> <laughs> Not in the face. Uh, she al- she also activates. Oh, oh, oh my god! I heard something lit recently. We're gonna have to talk about on salty and petty. I don't know if I can even bring it up here. What women are using instead of perfume? <sighs> oh, okay, yeah, we, that definitely has a, a topic for salty and petty. Hey, <laughs> something from their something from their body they're using instead of perfume to attract men. That that's a tale as old as time. But if you would like to discuss that, put it wow. on the, put it on the list. Wow. <laughs> she also activates her equipment, summoning her swarm of spaceships. In the watchtower, Huntress orders Plastic Man to find the rest of the team while she finds someone in charge. However, the first person she meets is Green Ooh. Lantern. Poor thing. Who, oh, how dare you? Who has also become one of Queen Bee's drones. However, once she appeals to his sense of heroism, he regains his wits. He goes back through the kitchens where the Injustice his wits. Gang... His Yes. He goes back where the Injustice Gang came through. There he finds the portal to the headquarters where Lex Luthor sits as a strange organism grows around him. Me... That's just his hair growing back finally. Don't worry about it. Meanwhile, Orion has joined Metron, Wonder Woman, and Big Bard as they journey along Mageddon's path of destruction and has led them to a destroyed world whose occupants fought until the last weapon melted in the last hand. They have not caught up with Mageddon, who is approaching Earth. On the moon, the General has fought Superman to a standstill. Prometheus has ambushed Huntress, and the global television news are already saturated with talk of war. In this time, only two bright spots exist. The arrival of Martian Manhunter preparing to telepathically coordinate his teammates, and the arrival of Batman preparing to fight Prometheus. A puny human. A puny Batman. human. My favorite character. Batman. My Ugh. favorite character. 19. Not, oh, no, no, no. Early 2000. Bat God. A Martian and a God. Kiss love my him. ass. Kiss <laughs> my ass, Batman. <laughs> That was too much. I'm just going to be real. This is where I really start kind of, ugh, they're, you know, kind of like where I'm not like okay. starting to be a Batman fan. Not every Grant Morrison arc in JLA, but I would say the majority of them have what, you know, the, bi- the big rescue moment is Batman shows up to kick some ass, right? Right? I mean, when in doubt, Channel Frank Miller, I get it. Batman. I get My it. My favorite character. Um, it's so impressive. Like honestly, he's the one that shouldn't even be on the Justice League. If we're being honest, I mean, yeah, he funds them, but we could always have, like, in the cartoon, have Oliver Queen fund them. At least he- I'll say this: Oliver's not hu- full of hubris. He's just not. Once again, popularity. Yeah, I know, but he doesn't even do anything. Like the more that I read, like JLA, it's just like. Why are you here? I mean, Nightwing did more than what Batman did when he was on the team. Like, yeah. just, ugh. Anyway, so. What, what, this, what, this arc, he's going to smack a uh, Just pander in the Ray. Don't worry about it. He's about to smack a CD-ROM off this guy's head, Lil. Come on. I mean, he, he loves to punch a sucker and a fool. Just ask any Green Lantern. See? Why can't you relate? <laughs> Because I'm not a billionaire. Uh, I'm petty. I'm nah, bitter. True, true. <laughs> I'm salty. All right. So part three, JLA 38 from February 2000. Uh, same team. The news of the Watchtower's destruction has reached a panic-stricken world, and a newscaster shoots himself on national television. What is this, Fox News? <laughs> All this is lost Ooh. on... <laughs> Uh, oh, they're all abandoned in their uh, their orange messiah. Uh, uh, anyway, all this is lost on well, Green Lantern. 
just let Ron DeSantis run for president and see what happens. <laughs> As a Floridian, I can say that. Next election, can we get two young guys, you know, like maybe 60 run for president? Well, you know, the last young guy we 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 uh we voted we voted in Kennedy was killed, so you know. Well, maybe, uh, well maybe not. Not, not the last young guy. What about Obama? <laughs> um, oh. Kennedy was younger than Obama. Oh, was he? Okay, but I'm just I'm I'm just saying compared to the rest, yeah, Obama. I'm pretty sure. Was <laughs> yeah, but Obama was still pretty young too compared yeah. to the rest. I mean, he could have lied about his age. He was black. You know how that goes. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. Those two terms, man. His hair went gray. That aged gray. him. Those eight years uh-huh. did age him. <laughs> uh. <sighs> All this is lost on Green Lantern. Just give it to Corey Booker already. Hey, oh. <laughs> a two little mark. <laughs> Booker can get it. And I think that drop will hold up. I honestly do. <laughs> hey all. all this is lost on Green Lantern, who has just discovered that Lex Luthor, the leader of the Injustice gang, has been co-opted by one of McGinnon's telepathic remote senders. He has already found a way to telepathically prevent him from using his ring, since it regarded him as a threat. It tries to kill him, but Martian Manhunter telepathically telepathic link activates and John... John arrives to shield him. In another part of the Watchtower, Prometheus is defeating Batman. Yeah, right. However, Batman planned for this. Prometheus's helmet was booby-trapped before it was put on display. At the push it of a button, the martial art and gymnast... Because I have a plan for everything! The, the martial art and gymnast programs in it are overwritten by the physical abilities of one man, Professor Stephen Hawking! Crippled Prometheus is an easy Remember target. When Hawking was in everything, like The Simpsons, uh, freaking Futura. It's just he was everywhere all the time. Big Bang, Big Bang Theory, yeah. Smallville. All right, so now it is canon. Batman beats on cripples. Uh, that's always been canon, but that's none of my business. I know. I know. Prometheus, uh, however, as Huntress offers to guard him while Batman looks for the rest of the league, Prometheus's teleportation mechanism activates, transporting himself and Huntress away. Wonder Woman and her new god allies arrive back from their scouting trip to find the Watchtower severely damaged. Brian makes a decision. He gives Metron his mother box, which controls his violent nature. The Metron, asking him to take it where she will be needed most, the other three will prepare to defeat the Injustice Gang. In Gotham City, Oracle is shifting through her wrecked computers, hoping to find something usable. Metron arrives, giving her mother box, saying, you are, you are only forerunners. Meanwhile, Aquaman must refuse the JLA summons to quell a civil war in Atlantis. What else is there? Exactly. In the Damn Orm. <laughs> I don't know. I'd be mad if my parents named me Orm, too, to be quite honest. I don't know. I think there's something different going on this time, though. Some, I don't know. Something smells fishy. <laughs> In the Watchtower, the General is still fighting Superman. He admits that he has no particular reason to fight and does so simply for the enjoyment of destroying Superman's dream. Finally knocking out Superman, he turns to go back to the portal in the kitchens, but Martian Manhunter has been psychically eavesdropping. Jean sends that sees that Mageddon is flattening the general's thought processes, the first principles, operating like a tank with no thought of deviation. However, this makes him predictable and he runs straight into Orion and Sturmer. In New York, Queen Bee, her personal bodyguards... New York brain- City! And the brainwashed inhabitants of Manhattan, so what else is new, are working to turn the downtown into a giant hive complex. It looks grim for I mean, Wonder Woman. It was already that, but whatever. Yes, but now there's just bees there. Uh, uh, it looks grim for Wonder Woman, Big Barter, and Plastic Man until Plastic Man tells them he used to hang out with the Red Bee, a no-hope hero who would talk about... <laughs> what a deep cut. What a deep cut. Richard Raleigh for the win, baby. Uh, who would talk about It's always a guy friends. named Richard, isn't it? 
Hey, Dick Rally? Oh, no! Oh, no, they got us again! <laughs> they got us again! I think Richard Ryder should... I think whoever created Richard Ryder needs to have a talk with Big, Big Red B. That's all I'm saying. Whoever created Red B, they need to have a talk. Dick Rally, that's the convention Lilith and Justin are starting next year. <laughs> Brought to you by Case and Lunatics Podcast Network. Oh, God. Uh, uh, that's right, kids. Bring the biscuits to the oven. Hell. Uh, he would talk for hours on end, and he is therefore un- intentionally something of an expert on bees. After agreeing to follow him, the two heroines blend in with the crowd, getting close enough to ambush Queen Bee. Her hearing is less acute than a human, and she cannot see the low end of the visible spectrum. Steel sees them, but says nothing. Stymied by science! Science? In the Watchtower, Martian Manhunter, Zoriel, and the powerless Green Lantern are trying to reach out to Luther in the Mageddon remote center. Martian Manhunter telepathically battles the thing, but ultimately Green Lantern breaks through to him. As the remote sender dies, John briefly connects with Mageddon. It has arrived. There is still a bomb left in the watchtower, so the group splits. Superman, Batman, and Martian Manhunter go to the ghost zone where Prometheus and the General are, and Green Lantern takes Lex Luthor in Martian Manhunter's psi-responsive Martian spacecraft to the JLA Embassy in North America, where heroes are gathering. Quietly, Zoriel goes to try and defuse the bomb. No one asks where he is until the watchtower explodes. Because he's not important. Oh, no, he has a plan. Mm, and Zor, oh, in this issue, Zoriel quotes Luke 23, 46. Okay. Oh, I know. <laughs> the woman with the big, the, with the big, biblical- hey, uh, spiritually for old Grant. <laughs> <laughs> the woman with the biblical names, like, I know. All right, let's keep going. JLA number 39, March 2000, World War Three, Part 4. Uh, I believe we got the same team. Uh, at the JLA Embassy, the Assembled Howard Heroes. Porter. Hey, it was a Howard Porter week for us, wasn't it? <laughs> no, Howard Mackey wrote those Spider-Man ones. Dang it, I was close. Speaking of ayahuasca. They're all Howard, think- they're all Howard the Ducks to me. Whoa! Nice. That's right, trapped in the world. Proud member of the collective. Or proud member of the collective. <laughs> At the JLA Embassy, the assembled heroes have gathered and been met by Aztec. Mageddon is the prophesied dark god he was destined to fight. So he, traveled, so he traveled in this. So we're going to wrap up this character before they started the new uh, millennium. Uh, <laughs> So he traveled into space to find it. The encounter blinded him. Mageddon cannot be threatened or reasoned with. It simply exists simply to annihilate. Uh, let's see. Told, told Shut him up, should... Philip. <laughs> what? I know, I know. I'm not going to make any comments about you. I was just going to say, no. They warned Aztec if he did that too much, he'd go blind. <laughs> In the face of this news, Warrior, that's right, kids. Well, if you thought Cal Rayner was bad, but now we got Guy Gardner. Warrior demands they go out and defeat the supervillains Mageddon is influencing, but cooler heads prevail. The arrival of Green Lantern inspires a few people, but Warrior is still unconvinced, telling him to leave it to the professor. You think he was jealous of Kyle? Oh, yeah. He's like, I'm just Warrior. Give me my rig back. However, Green Lantern responds by asking for volunteers to take the incoming swarm of the Queen Bee Space Armada before they breach the atmosphere. In the Ghost Zone, the General is fighting off Superman, Orion, and Martian Manhunter. He plans to take the Martian spaceship back into normal space and then uses its nuclear capability to destroy the Earth. However, Orion activates the airlock and Sturmer pushes the General out, sacrificing himself in the process. Good riddance to the both of you. Oh, damn. Realizing that Orion's boom tube let him teleport to anywhere in the universe. <laughs> Superman comes up with a plan to teleport in the Mageddon and attack him from the inside. Orion volunteers Hey-o. to come with him. Uh, Orion volunteers come with him, but Batman and Martian Manhunter must stay to stop the Earth from going to war. Martian Manhunter wants to find another way, but Superman is adamant. 
He founded the, they founded the league to save the world. This is com- this thing is coming, and there is no one to help uh, besides them. At Prometheus's base in the crooked house. Uh, Got a little lean to it, huh? Where is this, Florida? Or New Jersey? Oh, I, see a, I see a logo. What now? Ooh. Ooh. Burn. Uh, someone had something on Twitter. They're like, yeah, if you have a wedding there, yeah, just expect it's not going to be about you that day. Huntress has been psyching herself up to kill Prometheus while he is unarmed and unable to fight back. However, Batman arrives with a ride home before she can, informing her that because because she tried, she's off the team. Shut up! God, he's insufferable. No, no, no. You're off the team. You have to make it look like an accident. You just had to not save him. Yes. You don't you don't kill him, but you don't save him. His boot was loose while you were dangling him off the roof. You know, one of Ew. those. Oh, good for you. He accidentally fell in the recycler or, you know, hung himself out of the bat plane. He just jumped into that infinite void. <laughs> you don't have to kill hey, you don't have to kill him. He could just, just push him out the door, he'll fall forever, you know. You know, Schrodinger's a dead guy. He'll starve just falling, you know. Come on. In New York, the Air Force attempts a strike on Queen Bee's hive, but is no match for her minion's firepower. She considers herself triumphant, but then Steel reveals that he was never really under her control. Smashing the machine with Smash it! Her... <laughs> Smashing the machine that controls her enslaved humans. Humans. Smash it! Uh, he signals Plastic Man, Wonder Woman, and Big Barda to attack with him in the confusion. However, Plastic Man is knocked out before he can tell anyone his plan. In Gotham Classic City... Classic Plastic Man. Exactly. In Gotham City, Oracle has been reduced to a radio link. Her equipment is wrecked, but she has the mother box. And when it bonds with her mainframe, repairing and upgrading her equipment, she gains the power of digital telepathy, allowing her to connect with every superhero on the planet. Invigorated by the knowledge that they are not alone, the heroes must fight a war on two fronts, holding off the Queen Bee's armada while simultaneously fighting the armies of the world. Mageddon's effect is manifesting worldwide, sparking wars between nations. In the upper atmosphere, Green Lantern is using Martian Manhunter's psi responsive spacecraft to help a few powerhouses take on incoming aliens. Buoyed by early success, he goes looking for Mageddon and gazes into eyes bigger than worlds. Distracted, he does not see the attack by the last enemy ship. And that's why you can't trust a Green Lantern to get the job done. They're all <gasps> got too big of egos. How dare you? <laughs> Even Jon Stewart suffers from it. You know? I know. I know. It's their Achilles heel because they're human. Kilowog does not suffer from it, and Chip definitely doesn't suffer from it. It's a human lantern trait. Just the way it is. All right. JLA number 40 from April 2000, World War Three Part 5. The penultimate issue! Take a drink, future love. You just open the door for yourself. <laughs> I Take always do. Hey, <laughs> As Oracle reacts oh, to the disappearance... Oh, maybe this was an April Fool's book. Oh, as Oracle reacts to the disappearance of Green Lantern's mind, shut up, love. He has to, she has to keep a running account of the war for the heroes. Enemies of the United States now include China, Russia, Japan, and the EU. Worldwide, paranoid civilians are lashing out at one another, and to cap it off, India just launched an ICBM at Pakistan, and a responding missile is being prepared. Things are looking dark. Hmm, that's a little too close to home, considering mm-hmm. North Korea just tried to blast one off not too long ago. hey <laughs> Until Batman <laughs> and Martian Manhunter arrive. In Earth orbit, Green... Oh, that's alright, we'll just send Dennis Rodman to talk to him. <laughs> in Earth orbit, Green Lantern is cursing himself for dying in such a ridiculous fashion. However, exactly. he soon re- <laughs> However, he soon realizes he is not dead. He was plucked to safety at the last minute by Metron, who feels he is necessary for the survival of Earth. 
plot armor Green. demands it. It's fine. Green Lantern believes he cannot break through the lock. McGinnon put on the ring, but Metron asks him, is that your will or McGinnon's? Oh, burn! It's like you idiot. <laughs> Returning to Earth at the JLA Embassy, he is struck momentarily by the self selflessness of and heroism of his peers. When Warrior asks him to take a few minute breather, he finds a quiet room and starts working on breaking McGeddon's lock. And he called him an amateur. How dare he? Exactly. He was like, leave it to the professionals. Well, look at you, idiot. <laughs> on, Venice, on Venice Beach in Los Angeles, the Pacific Rim forces a, Cana a Canadian-Japanese alliance are facing Young Justice, the Atom, and Stars and Stripe. In Metropolis, paratroopers are facing Arsenal, Green Arrow, and a <laughs> What a weak-ass squad, bro. <laughs> As a fan of each of these characters, let me just say, that is a weak-ass squad. Well, everyone else is at the embassy, so it's basically everyone who couldn't make it to the embassy. Firestorm! Now that's what I'm talking about, baby! <laughs> yes. And over the India-Pakistan border, Firestorm is dealing with the nuclear rockets of both sides. However, the conflict is escalating. The U.S. just began targeting China and Russia. Try to, infl try to inflate the U.S. dollar on our watch, see? <laughs> what, are we talking about your favorite hero, Elongated Man? Exactly. At least he's not musky. Whoa! Get it? Elon Musk. <laughs> In New York, the heroes are on the ropes with the forces at her command. The Queen Bee is preparing to sterilize New York in an 18-mile radius around it. Good yeah. luck, honey. Many oh, have fuck. tried. No one succeeded. We have a couple miles of him. Wait, so New Jersey. Wait, 18-mile radius? New Jersey? Uh, that's probably like uh, that's probably like right over the over the bridge, over the water. Uh, suddenly, Steel realizes what Plastic Man's plan was. None of the aliens can see the color red, so he wraps himself in the comatose Plastic Man and attacks Queen Bee, distracting her long enough for Big Barda to activate the boom tube. Hail. The destination is Queen Bee's homeworld, and her troops immediately try to follow her, either via the boom tube or by turning and flying away. This fight, at least, is over. Smart. Works smarter, not harder. <laughs> Barda requires immediate medical attention, so Mr. Miracle leaves to take her back to New Genesis. Oh, my favorite couple, to be honest. Yeah. Batman is called an emergency JLA meeting, which Wonder Woman goes to attend. Plastic Man is sent to the infirmary at the JLA embassy, and Steel goes to his workshop in the basement of Steelworks in Metropolis to repair his armor. <laughs> Could you be any more obvious? <laughs> Come on, kid. That movie was not bad, Jay. Eh? But guess there. what? Animal Man, because, oh man, this was a resurgence in Animal Man in the late 90s and well, early 2000s. Grant. Grant. <laughs> exactly. He is met there by Animal Man, who has a theory on how McGinnon's mental field works, and maybe an idea to stop it. At the embassy, the JLA meeting is attended by Wonder Woman, Martian Manhunter, and Batman. Wonder Woman <clears throat> wants to find a way to resolve the crisis without war. Martian Manhunter hopes to summon help from some other quarter, and Batman just wants to hold out until Superman and Orion have defeated McGinnon. All are exhausted, none have a coherent plan. Then Steel arrives. He thinks everyone should listen to Animal Man. Curious that Animal Man would be the one with the answer, but whatever, Grant. It's your book, bud. This is your farewell. This is your bon voyage. Okay, fine. It's called the uh, Go Buy the Reprint Shekel Plan, love, hope I. Oh, I know. And it worked. I ain't gonna lie. It worked. I, ha I have almost a complete collection of Animal Man Ooh, because nice. of this, probably. <laughs> nice. Within minutes, Wonder Woman leaves to begin co coordinating the new plan. Batman goes to help Oracle coordinate forces while Martian Manhunter prepares to make contact with Superman. After initially finding McGinnon's mind too primitive to reason with, Martian Manhunter finds a portion that thinks over and over, Am McGinnon. Martian Manhunter tries to extract Superman's location from this part of McKinnon before he is struck. Well, he's no Galactus. Yeah. Before he is struck with a cold truth, this part of McKinnon's mind is Superman, chained and made to serve the whole. 
Suddenly, a whirling vortex appears in the sky outside the embassy. The heroes rush out to see. It is Flash! Back after go after going missing just before the riot in Bell Reef. Furthermore, that was like, what, the issue 31? Uh, like, in the 30s, right before Yeah, it's like started, right, right? right before this, yeah. Uh, furthermore, he has brought help in the form of a blue giant suffused with lightning. Glimmer from Wonder World. So... That's low foul fire. Yes! Wally West for the win! This shit is bananas! B A <laughs> I just love I just love what you know, we're giving Wally West the credit, you know, some you know, at least Grant's giving Wally some uh good stuff. You know, Wally's been doing this since he's Something been what, new. like eight? Yeah, come on. <laughs> the greatest flash of all time. Fighting Suck right. it, Robbins! <laughs> I got the greatest flash of all time. Suck it, Ray Harper. <laughs> Wally is the realized potential because they'll never let Dick take over for Bruce permanently, but you know, Wally will always be a flash. And Roy Harper just was like, no, I'm going to be my own thing. F you. <laughs> you messed me up enough, man. <laughs> that chili. <laughs> Chili milk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, should we get to the last part? Yep. Don't want to keep Justin waiting too long. Let's go. All right. Let's see. JLA 41. Yes, we're going to wrap this up in an oversized issue, kid. Grant Morrison's last on JLA. Um, from May 2000. Yes, World War Three Part 6. Mageddon. Uh, Where's the arm? You beat me to it. Uh, that was just right <laughs> on the tip of my tongue. God, we are a hive mind. 20, 24 hours ago, Zoriel died in the nuclear explosion which destroyed the Justice League Watchtower. He did so specifically to return to the Court of Lights and plead his case before the presence made manifest. <clears throat> God. There, he, instead, he finds the assembled angels preparing their suggestions for a new universe. Zoriel was angry. I mean, to be honest, same. <laughs> <laughs> the year 2000, well, they had their chance, you know. You're not even going to give them to 2001? Eh. <laughs> well, have you seen the internet? Uh, with her new digital telepathy, Oracle observes events around the world. Humanity is giving in to despair and war as men and women fight practically everywhere across the globe. She is adamant that the Justice League and the rest of the heroes must stand against Mageddon because she says, after us, there's nobody. At the embassy, the heroes are amazed by the giant the Flash brought with him. Named the Glimmer, he escaped the destruction of War Wonder World by running across time, looking for the point in cosmic history which had the best chance of stopping Mageddon dead. Earth. This, this news brings hope, but there is little of that inside the embassy. Martian Manhunter has been driven to depression by the news that McGinnon has turned Superman into a powerless drone. Batman attempts to snap him out of it and asks to be put in contact with Superman. Meanwhile, Green Lantern manages to crack the block McGinnon put on his power ring. At Easter Island in the South Pacific, Wonder Woman's heroes are arriving to build her idea. Animal Man explains that his animal abilities come from his power to tap into the morphogenic field, which around Earth Smoke influence, the doobie? influences <laughs> and is influenced by all living things. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, Smoke the doobie. Morphogenic field. Oh, his, God. His powers let him realize that Mageddon is simply stimulating the reptilian hindbrain, which humans inherited from their lizard ancestors. Um, I think Lilf does that with uh, energy drinks. Pretty sure, yeah. Monster, please sponsor us. Please. Or with Bang. Enough? Preferably Bang. Oh, Bang. Hey, oh, so come on, because it's perfect. It's on brand. We could do so, so, so much great promotion for you, Bang. Ugh. <laughs> with, it, with enough energy, the superhero scientists they have brought with them can rig a purple ray to interfere with Mageddon's signal. 
To give, the, to give the world a fighting chance, however, they will need help, and for this, they need the second function of their rig. To briefly retune the human morphogenic field to a superhuman setting, the best power source they could find is Black Lightning, and he is ready. They are set to begin. Oh, it's so funny. World War Three. Go, Black Lightning, go! <laughs> so anytime, they, anytime DC does World War Three, they have to have Black Lightning. <laughs> no, for real. It's a thing. Uh, on Venice Beach, and the here comes are, the Ray. The heroes are losing. The Ray is about to be killed when Aquaman arrives with the full forces of the Atlantean military. The human armed forces surrender. At the Court of Lights, Zoriel cannot convince his fellows to return to Earth and fight Mageddon. His opponents point out that the presence is renowned for working in mysterious ways. Zoriel hopes only that whatever the angels convince the presence to make, that they will not abandon it as they have the current inhabitants of creation. But as he is walking away, a steady stream of angels break ranks to follow him until most of the crowd agrees to uh, go to Earth. They probably shouldn't do that, consider what happened to the last time they followed a guy that told God to go F himself. And bring peace between the nations. Oh, yeah, you're bang, you're cruising for a fall, guys. <laughs> <laughs> So we got your back, Lucy. I mean, Lucifer, Lucifer Morningstar makes it look easy, but it's hard. It's hard on the poor boy. Hey, oh. <laughs> See, kids, I'm I've trained myself, man. I hear her. I hear hard coming out of her mouth. I'm just like, shut up, shut up, you. <laughs> I heard that hard coming out of Lil's mouth. Hey, oh. Uh. In the embassy, Martian Manhunter is helping Bruce make contact with Superman. However, all Batman can find is a constant field of soul-destroying noise. Batman's like, ah, my bad. All right. Batman wonders where Superman's mind is in all the noise until Martian Manhunter drops the bomb. The noise is Superman's mind, operating as part of the whole. The suffocating depression Mageddon generates is so great that as the three heroes' minds are linked, an image is formed. The young Bruce Wayne, cowering as a monstrous gunman, uh -oh. kills, Krypton, kills Krypton and Mars. <laughs> so many floating heads. Damn it, killed. Bruce! This was a terrible idea! <laughs> so many floating heads of guilt. But Batman shouts, breaking the spell. This is enough to break Superman out of his funk. Bat God realized. Outside, Mageddon, Aztec has returned. Finding Orion, he uses the energies in his helmet, Hail, to heal them. Both men break into the giant machine, but Orion is captured. Talk about your post-nut clarity. <laughs> Amen, sister. Amen. <laughs> what a phallic reference is here, man. Lots of helmets. Uh... Healing energies. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, yeah. Slow down. We need this for drops. Uh... A Aztec does better. He lands next to Superman. He points out that the dreaded Tezcatlipoca, the dark god of his ancestral mythology, is now manifest around him. And it's just an old computer strapped to a bomb. <sighs> However... <laughs> However... A computer. <laughs> However, his people design designed a weapon against it. Uh, spam blocker. <laughs> People designed the weapon against it. Him tapping a button on his helmet. He tells Superman to tell them I did my duty and is replaced by a blinding flash as his helmet's uncanny energies flare out destructively. So yes, that helmet flared out of control. Don't you hate that little hellfire? Should have had more discipline. Oh! We're saying, Azte we're saying Aztec was a one-pump chump. Oh yeah. Clearly. Oh, damn. Mm. Yeah, guys, you want a second date, man? Make sure she um unleashes that energy, that fourth dimensional energy first, kids. Okay. Uh, I'm sure. Shocked out of his depression, Superman next sees Green Lantern operating at full strength and braving Mageddon's defenses to rescue Orion. Meanwhile, the heavenly host appears to leaders around the globe, convincing them to lay down their arms. In the midst of the peace, people worldwide sense that something is going to happen and head outside. Mageddon is going to explode in half an hour. And Wonder Woman's device on Easter Island does not have enough power until the 
arrival of the glimmer with his power he fuels the machine yeah kids a bunch bunch of superheroes went to easter island and put their heads together Ew. Ew. oracle fills everyone in the entire population of the earth now has superpowers comparable to wonder woman linked by digital telepathy what is this buffy <laughs> Wait a minute, did Josh steal this from freaking DC Comics? Spider Man, go call Josh Whedon. Uh, linked by digital telepathy, they team up with the Heavenly Host and make for Mageddon with the intention to destroy it. With news of this, Batman tries to inspire Superman, but when this is not enough, he resorts to bullying. Of course. Luckily, this is exactly what works, and Superman springs into action with a plan. The anti-sun that is Mageddon's power source will explode shortly, wiping out the galaxy. However, Superman's power to absorb sunlight should allow him to drain the anti-sun of energy. Over protest, he flies Bust into the, the cover. Yes, he flies into the anti-sun and begins absorbing, despite the cold horror of the experience. For a few seconds, it seems that Superman has failed, but when the countdown hits zero, the anti-sun's explosion is reduced to a bright light. Mageddon has been decommissioned. The world is saved. One week later, the One watchtower. Week later. <laughs> the watchtower has been rebuilt. Metron, Orion, and Big Barda are returning to the fourth world. Thanks to the actions of the Justice League, the future was saved. Metron tells them a secret. When the fourth world is completed and done away with, the fifth world is destined to arise from the population of Earth, and humans will shape the fifth world with their actions from now on. Uh, broad, brought back to reality. <laughs> By their exhaustion, the team decides to take time off. <laughs> but Dr. Destiny is threatening to de-imagine Detroit if they can't prove he didn't dream them up. Once again, the Justice League moves to save the day. Yeah, that Detroit is a bad dream. Hey, oh. Damn, Dr. Destiny. <laughs> Dr. Destiny. Oh, leave Detroit alone. It's had enough. I know. Poor Detroit. This is even when they had water. That's Flint, silly. Oh, that's right. Close enough. It's a whole state. All right, Lilith. Thought, thoughts on Well, they got a new governor. Shout out to Big Gretch. So fingers crossed things look up for them now. Oh, nice. So thoughts on Grant Morrison's swan song? Uh, it wasn't as trippy as all his other stuff. It was really just a love letter. Um, yeah. Yeah. I enjoy it. I think it's a good story, a good solid story, a really great way to cap out his run, in, in my personal opinion. Oh, yeah, definitely. And again, I don't think it was as trippy because he was try tying everything up because every other one he was pretty much like, you know, setting this. You know, I could have done without all the new gods in his story because I just, that's not my deal. I know, me neither. <laughs> It's like the they're kind it's of jokes a, all, as villains. The new gods are kind of like I don't know, like the Eternals. It's like everyone knows all the comic fans know, but I've never met anyone who's like, oh yeah, that's like that's my a favorite real fan. thing. Yeah. Although I really do like Mister Miracle, but that's more because he got his own book that was amazing, not necessarily yeah. any of the old stuff. Same. Yeah, no, but no, I do no, like yeah. Big Barda. I enjoy Big Barda, and she should get her own book. <laughs> well, once again, yeah. I mean, what was that? 80s 90s that was she needs the mr miracle yeah exactly yeah so on that All note right. give the kids the homework oh i was gonna say real quickly did you want to talk the new golden age oh yeah sure absolutely um uh bravo hats off chef's kiss i enjoyed it so much so, it was so, so refreshing bring, are we bringing helena wayne like yeah the answer is yes it seems to me are we putting together a jsa from like across time and space yeah like all the most popular valuable properties clearly yes yep, that don't yep. have like a counterpart on on regular earth prime yes. so yeah mm -hmm. which will be an interesting take um yeah, I, I think it's a good choice, honestly. Shake up things a little bit. Because, yeah, there was a few things with it this week. But, I, yeah, I wanted I definitely wanted to mention the new Golden Age, number one, which you should pick up, kid. 
so, anything else? Nope. Give the kids the homework. All right. So, yes, kids. Remember, there's only four episodes of Unlimited Justice left. We're going to close out the year and then, uh, yes. Salty and Petty. Salty and Petty will take the place of Unlimited Justice in 2023. And kids, Out again, of the ashes. You are not ready. <laughs> Hell, Lilith is coming up here to, live in person to, to strategize. You guys are not ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yes, next week we'll be talking uh, Reckless Youth, the first appearance of uh, Bart Allen Impulse from The Flash 92 to 94. And then in two weeks, we'll be talking uh, Dead Heat from The Flash 108 through 111 and Impulse 10 and 11. And then after that, our penultimate episode will be uh, us talking about all things Bendis at DC. So, you know, that's going to be interesting. Get your popcorn no, like... ready, kids. And how do we end this podcast that's right kids it's the 30th anniversary we're gonna cover the death of superman for episode 50 our final episode so everybody's like you didn't do 52 boo we couldn't wait to put salty and petty on the air we're sorry <laughs> and again it would have been weird because yeah if we did that 52 would have been the first week of january so <laughs> me and little adhd went <laughs> exactly <laughs> All right, kids. So, yes, send your thoughts on all on the rest of the year. Email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614 382 2737. That's 614 38 capes. And remember, you can find uh, Unlimited Justice on Facebook, on Twitter. Uh, find links to all the various social medias and all the youth uh, Facebook fan groups and everything we do, all the, yeah. All the social stuff, uh, link to the YouTube channel, everything we do gets a video this episode, interviews, everything we do. Uh, so movie reviews. So smash that subscribe button so you don't miss a second of any of it. Smash it. We do it all. Smash it. And again, the Patreon, because once again, we're uh, funding this thing ourselves. Every little bit helps, but 3 to $5 gets you early access to creator interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats. I got the good mic out for you guys. And since we're on a DC podcast, yes, the next episode, we'll be talking uh, some milestone with uh, Mr. D.D. Chichester. Uh, Blood Syndicate, thir was it 31 and 32? So... You'll probably hear that here on this feed for once, so uh, go check that out. And, of course, superhero <laughs> superhero movie brackets. We will find the worst superhero movie of all time pretty damn soon. So We're crowning yes. the wiener pretty soon. So, yes, so subscribe, catch up on, the, on all our past episodes, and be prepared for the series finale. And then in 2023, you can vote on what we talk about. Hey! We even said some of our podcasts we don't do anymore. If you want to hear more of that, uh, vote for that. If, if you want to hear more Unlimited Justice, vote on it. Lilith and I can do completely uncensored episodes on Patreon. Wade's World. Uh, what was that? Comic? Comic Capers. Comic Book Roundup. Oh, Comic uh, Capers. Yeah. Either way. <laughs> if you want if, if you want me and the boys. Newcastle Crew. Newcastle Crew, yes. Uh, hell, uh We've done many Arrowverse shows. We could do that. <laughs> we'll bring uh, everybody back. It'll be fun. <laughs> oh, God. If you want me and the boys to fire up the Quantum Zone, just let us know. I'm sure I, I know I'm going to get a vote on that. Quasar. Ray. Yeah. <laughs> I know Ray is going to. I know Ray will vote for that. Uh, what, I, I was looking through the list the other day. I know there was more. Uh, oh, yeah. But yeah, Newcastle Crew. I did want to The bring Gotham that up. Podcast. Oh, before the bat. Before the yes. bat. That's my vote, honestly. Get Kelly, get Tyler, it'd be fun. <laughs> oh, oh my God! You know it'd be great if we could get Rob Southgate do like uh, enough set. <laughs> <gasps> that would be hilarious. Heck yeah! All right, so yeah, so see, see, see what kind of stuff you're gonna get in uh, on the Patreon. So subscribe oh, now. Just, but, but but for funsies, it's just Rob and Charlie. 
Yeah. <laughs> That's the cage match. <laughs> Don't even tell Rob we're not going to show up. Just him and Charlie. <laughs> I'll let him in. I'll be like, oh, gotta go. Bye. <laughs> oh, see, kids, see, you, you would pay anything for that, wouldn't you? All right. So pick yourself up some Capes and Lunatics, Capes and Lunatics Sidekicks merch, or Lil's favorite, just rain ran the money on us by using that Cash App link. Uh, Make it rain. So find it all at Linktree, L I N K T R dot E E slash Capes and Lunatics. And here's a preview of that enough said with uh, Rob and Charlie. That's my says, Charlie. All right, Lilith Hellfire, the e- the evil weapon that's just, that'll destroy them all. Lilith Hellfire, where can people find you? If you want to talk mother mother boxes and boom tunes, find me on TikTok at Lilith Hellfire sixty nine, where you can find me making all of the comments and maybe some of the content. Uh, looking forward to twenty twenty three and what that brings. Come check me out. Bing. Either do the six or do the nine. Ah. Uh, uh... Get your head out of your butt, buddy. Let me get a ride on your alligator back, bro. Uh, very hard, very tempting. What was the theme of tonight's story, kids? Power of the penis. Uh, Somebody was trying to sneak it in. Somebody's be gentle to with the package. <laughs> no. That's the moral of the story. Be gentle with your package or it'll blow your eyes out. <laughs> hey oh good for that release uh i can't wait to blow his mind but get inside of the luther all right thank you for joining us again next two weeks we're going to do some flash and impulse then in, in three weeks bend this and then we close the whole damn shop down with death of superman for episode 50 the mother of all cash grabs you're not ready Literally the mother. I think they all spun out of that one. Yeah. DC, Marvel, they're all like, we got to do Death of Superman. All right, kids. Come back next time. And remember, come get yourself some justice. Unlimited justice. Outrageous.